Hi, this is Nadia with FilmSnobReview.com, and I am here today with Jesse Barr and Lena Hudson, who are co-directors, co-producers, right? And co-writers of Too Long at the Fair, which we just watched at the San Diego Film Festival. Fantastic. So I'm going to sit and ask yes, you guys a few questions. I just want to describe them. They're two lovely ladies um, <laughs> who have great feminist views. I just want to add that really quick. <laughs> yeah. Yes! yes. Uh, so let's start how you guys ended up collaborating together. Yeah. We um, met in college, um, so we did a lot of theater in New York together, and I guess the impetus for, for this film was we wanted to stay creative collaborators and friends. I was moving to Los Angeles, and Lena lives in New York. Yes. So she, yeah. ab- she abandoned me. No. How dare! No. And so we, yeah, we wanted to um, keep in touch in an artistic way, not yeah. just as friends. And, right. um, and so we, we were like, let's, we're just going to make something, we're just going to make something. And we sort of had this, I, a very sort of skeleton of, of an idea of a short, and we would, we would sort of assign each other scenes, mm-hmm. and we would switch them back and forth and give notes, and then sort of we fleshed it all out, like, that yeah. way, sort of. And we spoke, yeah. like, many times a week, and we, yes. like, just sort of, like, little <laughs> gifts, so she'd be, like, send me a scene, and I'd be like, oh, she sent me a scene, and like, or, yeah. like, get an idea, and I'd yeah. call her and be, like, on a voice note, like, what do you think about this? And so it was yeah. a really fun, um, yeah, like, creatively rich time, just even in that sort of beginning stages of planning the, planning the short and what we thought it was, you know, going to be. Yeah. Well, I, personally, I found the short very original. Um, a you. very different take on the muse idea mm. and on the coming of age mm. kind of combined yeah. and kind of um, gave a different like I'm going to say feminist again feminist yeah. view on it yeah. Yeah. how did you end up coming with that type of idea yeah I mean I think we we did know that we wanted to do a sort of friendship coming of age tale um, and we knew that we wanted to deal with uh, f- fantasy this idea of like them being princesses and living in this this like fantasy the fantasy of what it is to be an adult woman in America the fantasy of of um, of uh, being an artist and what that maybe will look like and then sort of the reality kind of really crashing headlong into that idea um, and I think with that sort of the what what ends up happening with Chris's character I think was like hit the fantasy also that he has and not not lining that, up not lining yeah. up with yeah. their idea of what's going to happen um, and yeah yeah I think the themes of girlhood the transition from girlhood to womanhood was something we were struggling with ourselves personally yeah. and exploring what does it mean to be um, uh, a young woman or becoming a woman or I had just gotten married to be a wife like this also idea of that Lena and I think thematically have been interested in for a long time is the clown sort of the naive childlike sense of playfulness that is okay when you're a child and then becomes um, sort of not okay when you become an adult like when do you let go of that yeah. play or fantasy um, or when does yeah reality come crashing into this idea that you had about how you saw your life evolving. Um, we also just were really interested in, in t- women's relationships and how this male presence adds something different to that, but also how they're all just sort of flawed human beings and no one is a villain, no one's an, a hero. They're all um, just sort of seeking and searching and we talked a lot about there's a way that this film goes that is very different than the what, one that what happens. happens. You yeah. see, like this, it could just end with them all sort of exhausted and then going their separate ways. Or um, so, yeah, we wanted to explore the possibility in the narrative and sort of like how a dream can transition genre. We wanted to like set up this sort of playful expectation and then have it sort of dive into a more um, dramatic, perhaps, tone. Yeah. yeah, and that was that was a dramatic part yeah that, that part it actually surprised me did you when you were fleshing that out was it a little bit awkward to do that with the actor I've seen that actor before what's his name yeah, again Chris Messina. Chris Messina. Yeah. Chris Messina. so yeah. talented we're very 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 lucky to yeah. be able to work with him and we worked, shared the script with him and you know he gave notes and thoughts on it um, and when you get to work with such a like seasoned professional who's also an actor's actor is they're so yeah. generous and so he was very willing to go to these really uncomfortable places and you know we had obviously a very tight script but there was a lot of improvisation and I think because we'd worked together yeah. so much there was a trust there um, yeah. and I've 
you've worked with Chris before, so there was um, a willingness to really visit those vulnerable yeah. places. Yeah, and, and I think, too, one of the the things that I took away so much from watching him, that is something you hear a lot when you're in acting school, but is he he approaches that material with just no self-consciousness mm -hmm. about what it is about what it is and just lets the moment be and that was very inspiring I think for me on set and I'm sure but it helped me also feel that way yeah that we had um, you just like the character wants what they want and mm. you can't apologize for that in a lot yeah. of ways you know and I yeah. think that that um, that sensibility, that point of view, actually helps helps the film feel more realized. And I felt that even in the screening today, like people can plug in in their minds when he pauses before he shares his fantasy. Right. I could feel people like maybe thinking about what their fantasy is, and these really sort of vulnerable and awkward and shameful dark places that we don't feel um, safe to like say. And in a way, how amazing that they have this really like vulnerable, bizarre. Yes, sexual, like, sharing, you know, and I don't know, I think that's, it's interesting, it's interesting to me, people saying what they're really feeling, what they're really thinking, because I do feel like so much of our way we relate as human beings is with the mask and with performance and this persona, so to dive into this sort of um, really vulnerable, unattractive at times, you yeah. know, like parts of right. humanity is interesting. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting with your character... Yeah. how she had a crush on him you yeah. could kind of see it was evident yeah. and then there was this kind of uncomfortable the situation that came up in their relationship with each other Yeah. and then it was where do I go from here and I feel like that's a, a, something women go through a lot mm -hmm. where yeah. they, they find themselves attracted to a man especially an older man and then they, they go into a point where they're maybe slightly uncomfortable because how far... Am I willing to put myself out of my comfort zone to make him happy? Yeah. How did you feel? Yeah. How did you I want the character to translate from that? Yeah, I mean, I think that she... We, this was something we had talked about a lot, and I think there was this um, feeling of, like... Uh, I think she's so flustered, so flustered by the whole thing. I think she really doesn't, just doesn't know what to make of it during that scene where I think mostly Charlie and and him are talking to each other. I think Val is very much just like, "How did we get here? Can we rewind?" <laughs> I'm I'm looking to rewind to like yeah, an hour yeah, ago. Yeah, like, yeah, how yeah. did this happen? Um, but I think they that for her, once the decision happens, where she says, "Okay, I'm gonna do this," like she just says like all right that's that's this day this day apparently is going this way and i've just i've made this decision and i've made this decision um for us because we need this because we need this money and this mm -hmm. is actually like this actually makes a difference in our lives yep. and um and i think that there's uh to me that that is the moment for her of like reckoning um what it what it means to grow up and what it um that it count that it matters that like you can you can do a lot of irresponsible things but in the end like some of them are going to catch up with you and I think for her doing that is like that's the breaking point of that moment in her life is like the things that you do um they, they can they count yeah. in ter inside um and I think that yeah for her yeah. that is that moment so when you guys were writing your characters, did you base them on your personality? <laughs> I, well, they're we sort like, of a way heightened <laughs> version. <laughs> like, well, if anything, you turn up dials on yeah, certain things, you yeah. turn down. We talked a lot about, you know, especially because so many of the shots are the two shots and them together. So, and one of the our references was Daisy's, um, Vera, I'm going to butcher the last name, but um, Chitlakova. Mm -hmm. the, it's a beautiful, incredible film and like so fantastical and has a lot of whimsy, but also a lot of seriousness. And um, the dynamic of the two women, so needing a balance, like fire and water, sun and moon, these sort of overly simplistic, you know, you think of archetypes, but we wanted to obviously draw on that and draw on our natural dynamic and personalities, but obviously also like turn things up. And, and we did also want to explore as actors, playing things that, you know, maybe we wouldn't necessarily always get cast as. Yeah. Um, so that was something that we were also really interested in. 
Well, you guys did a great job. Oh, and really, so the good. acting, so the sweet. acting was fantastic. Oh, thank you. That's why thank I was you. like, maybe this is their dynamic in real. Life. <laughs> <laughs> We're acting. Yeah. We're actors. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think a lot. I mean, hopefully, what comes across is how intimate their relationship is and how comfortable they are with each other. And I think that was the thing we were hoping would translate from our own natural right. friendship on to. The sc- onto right. the screen right right their <laughs> chemistry together their chemistry, yeah. and that no matter what they're going through and what happens in, in that day that they will they will be there for each other and that um you know hopefully there is like a little bit of booing or hopefulness at the end knowing that this happened but they're gonna they're gonna be okay they're gonna be okay and they're gonna be okay together well dan and i had a had a conversation about what the title means Yes. yes. <laughs> so yes. I would love to hear if I'm right. Yes. Go ahead. What do you? Well, what do you think? I'm first? so curious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please. So I explained to him that too long at the fair is the idea that something is going well. It's exciting. It's new. And then you hit that moment where it takes a dark turn. Mm. Yeah. And then you realize that perhaps you spent too much time happy. Kind of Pinocchio-ish. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that definitely applies. We got the title from a Joan Didion short story. Um, it's a part of a quote from Slouching Towards Bethlehem. It's yeah, in that it's, book, Goodbye to it's All her, That. Yeah, it's her essay, Goodbye to All That, which is about her leaving New York at the end of her 20s. Um, so that and, transition, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and she, um, she, yeah, it is, it's a reference where she's talking about realizing, realizing that you can spend in too long at, at the, the fair. fair. Like, um, and that things do count and your decisions and your choices. Um, yeah. As Lena, as you put, yeah. can catch up with you, and that it does matter. You know how you how you live um, your life and the choices you make. And I, th- we felt, you know, I think sort of like we had read that and let that influence the the film just sort of while we were writing it, mm-hmm. and um, and I think the the fact that it sort of aligns with the princess yeah. dynamic yeah. dynamic yeah. felt quite right, which is why we felt like that right. was the right Perfect the title. right phrase. The title. Yeah. It was. It fit really well, Thank especially you. with the princess getups. Yeah. <laughs> that was really <laughs> fun to. We had a lot of fun around helping, 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 yeah. and directing in dresses. It was. Yeah. It sort of felt um, almost rebellious because we were in these very hyper feminine ensembles, and then we were lugging, literally lugging, lugging gear, gear around. Like, you know, like, and, yeah. yeah. No, no. I just. I felt really. That was really yeah. satisfying because it felt sort of. Yeah. I don't know like transgressive in a weird way yeah and that there is like I think so often that kind of uh stereotypical I guess maybe that's not the right word but uh femininity isn't seen as like powerful or like it can be the boss and so it felt it did feel very fun and kind of exciting to like be in that space where you're where you're like very girly on the outside but you're also the boss of this operation right. like and you're taken seriously like, even in even, that even insane even when I'm wearing like floofy sleeves <laughs> right, and right, like right. have bra- have Heidi braids right, <laughs> like, right. oh my yeah. god so yeah. yeah so I know you've answered this question several times because I've seen several people ask you but <laughs> where do we go from here oh yeah Yes. <laughs> well, we are in our festival run still. This has been an amazing experience, but we may be screening at a few other places. And then we're sort of going to figure out what the online release will be for this film. And then Lena and I are working on adapting this idea and scenario and these characters as part of um, a potential series. So cutting something for a pilot and, and sort of fleshing out the idea of um, that we that we you know yeah. discovered in the short. Yeah. And um, we have a another feature idea. We'll mm-hmm. talk about it since it's still very new. It's very embryonic. But, but um, yeah. yeah, but we're we have an idea um, for a new a next new thing. Yes. Yeah. Do you have websites where people can follow you? Yeah, we do. Yes, we have a one for the film. That's two. It's t l a t f movie dot com. Yes. And I have a website lenahudson dot com, and I have jessiebar dot com. So. Excellent. So I'm guessing you'll get quite a few followers after this. Yes. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you awesome. for your time. Thank you, you so much. So, so nice fun. to meet you. Yeah. I finally get to speak. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're 